key is to not let the glider get above you. If you notice, the wing stays out in front of him. For it to collapse is when you let it come all the way above you. Go ahead and let it collapse. Boom. That's where it collapses. So when it collapses, that's how far in front of you you let it go. Boom. All right. So if you look up, you should not see glider above you. It should be out in front of you. If it's coming forward, pull the brakes and stop it. And if it's stalling, hands up so it doesn't stall. You're trying to hold it, bam. That's above him. He's trying to do that on purpose. And boom, that's the problem. You stand lock-legged. So there's two things that happen. One, you let the glider get too far above you. And of course, all your body weight goes on your feet. If you notice, when it collapses, all his body weight is on his legs, boom. So if I look over and I see you standing lock-legged, I know a collapse is about to happen. That's how I know. And I'm yelling, brakes, 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 sit down. But if he's leaning back, there's no way it's gonna happen because if his feet are in front of him, the glider can't be above him because above him, it doesn't produce any lift and it won't hold him up. So it has to be out in front of you to produce that lift. So if you're holding your butt off the ground with the glider, you won't take a collapse, period. It just will stop happening if you stop standing up. But every time you stand up lock-legged and the body weight goes on your feet, there's no loading on the glider, boom, glider will collapse over and over and over. And so you just hold the glider out in front of you. No matter what you're doing, you never let that glider get above you. Bingo. And then of course, watch for stall point. If you stall it, the, uh, here's a stall, boom, that's a stall. And then he goes, boom, stalls, hands up, lets it recover, There's, does it again. Then he goes, stall it, and then recover it. Here we go, and, oh, big gust. Here it goes, and boom, broke into the stall, immediately hands to zero brake, let it surge and restart, and then stop it before it gets above you. He is getting yanked off the ground. No hands, bingo, jumping, flying. But notice as he's running, he's not putting his body weight on his legs. Now, if the wind goes to very light, it's not gonna hold your body weight, so you're gonna have to stand up. So there's there's not much you can do about that if the wind goes to like four mile an hour. Hey, move your dang hand out of your camera's way. Dude, <laughs> start over. You gotta have the monster directly in front of the place. There you go. Bingo. Boom. Surge. Okay, there's another good tip for the day. Notice he got jerked off the ground. He immediately went into a slide and then recovered from the slide. If you get yanked, if the glider slams, if you hear it collapse, break till you slide, recover from the slide. Do it again, do it again. Here, do a collapse and show them the recovery from the collapse. And boom, there's the collapse. Now you make it collapse, use your brakes. Turn, run, pull, gentle brake. Hey, do that again. Show them how much brake you use. Turn, run, pull, there you go. No, it's okay. He's got it. Unless you want to. Okay, there's the collapse. Turn, run, pull gently. Notice no panic braking, pulling seven feet of brake as far as your arm can pull. If you do that, boom, not only did it collapse, but then you stalled it and killed it and it touched the ground. Turn, run, gently control it, just enough brake to fly it back up, not so much that you stall it. And the camera kind of has to point at him even though I'm looking at you. Boom, collapse. So the first thing you do is hit the brakes when it's in front of you to get it back behind you. Brake, hands up. Do it again, do it again. 
So it collapses, bam, break to open it, and then hands back up when it gets in front of you and let it fly. Break, hands up. If you hold the brakes for a second too long, you stalled it. So you pull brakes to get it back in front of you, but then immediately hands back up when it's in front of you so you don't stall it. So if it does collapse, brake, get it in front of you, hands up, let it reopen and fly, and then stop it above you again. Bingo, and loading. Here we go. It's actually good to practice letting it go towards frontal so you get a feel of what's going on and actually can stop your own frontal so boom you feel because trying to make it frontal is actually much harder than it looks unless you're you guys <laughs> there you go so he's he's standing up on purpose to unload the glider while he's throwing his hands up to make it surge. So he's, he's, he's really trying to make it collapse because if he keeps hanging his butt over the seat, it ain't gonna collapse. He's gotta stand up lock-legged like you guys. Now watch that, turn left. There you go, left brake and gentle and fly back under it without panic braking and slamming it. Notice he went into a beautiful slide to keep the glider perfectly loaded. There you go. Let's do that wingtip drag to the right there. Glider comes down, look at his brakes. He's not burying the brakes, just nice and gentle. Then he turns right, runs at a 45, gentle. Look how much left brake he pulled. Maybe two, three inches. Brings it down, look at the brakes. He's not burying the brakes. He's only making corrections. Very gentle, turns, walks under it. Boom, small, no panic braking, no freaking out and jerking all the brakes. Uh, one other thing, if it drops to the right, to the wingtip, here we go. Comes down to the wingtip, bing, and there we go. Very gentle brake. He's gonna weight shift right, boom. Notice he let go of the right brake. He physically let go, why? Because if you weight shift right, your arm isn't long enough to keep from burying the wrong brake. So you have to let go of the low side brake because when you weight shift, this arm can't reach it and you're pulling three feet of the wrong brake. So when you weight shift, see right here, if he turns, he's just hammering the wrong brake. And so when you go to recover and you turn to get it to recover, you gotta let go of that low side brake and then make sure you grab it on the way up so you stop it above you and don't overdo it. So he brings it down and then he lets go of the brake, turns, sidesteps, grabs the brake and stops it. Or anything in the back riser. Here, steer with the back risers. You can steer with the whole back riser. So if the glider's surging, you don't have to try and get only the brake. Grab anything on the back of the glider, even the back two risers, go C's and D's. Even, even both back risers, you can fly the glider just fine. So if you ever had a brake line break in flight, no biggie, just grab the riser. Fly with the riser, no problem. Bingo. And you can kite with the risers. With the risers. What? We can touch the risers. The uh, Only the back risers. Yes. You just don't lock your hands on them when you're pulling the glider up. Or it disables. Bingo. Okay, let's go back to that hanging the butt thing and sliding. Bingo. Oh, a no hands pull up. So if he turns right, the glider's gonna come up. If he turns left, it's gonna go down. You can literally do this no hands. Turns right, brings it up. And beautiful weight shift, sidestep under it. Literally brought it up from a wingtip drag with no hands. So now all you guys pulling five feet of brake, think about that for a second. Why are you pulling five feet of brake if you can do it with no hands? Remember when I was yelling, turn, 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 over and over and you didn't do it? That's why, because if you turn, you don't need any brakes. Turn, walk, 
and then maybe pull a little bit, a tiny bit. But it's like you forget the turn, you forget to walk at the 45, and then you just try and use seven feet of brake to recover the glider and you stall it over and over and over. So you can't be lazy, you gotta add the pieces in that order. Turn, walk, pull. Do that again, no hands wingtip drag, that was cool. Bingo. Turns right, that pulls that right riser, makes it come up. If he turns left, it goes down. Turns right to bring it up. And if he wants to recover, he turns. Woo! And sidesteps under at a 45. And then notice him transition to a lean as the glider comes up. As it comes up, he goes from the turn to the lean. Do that again, because I mean, there's so many little things you don't even know to look for. He turns, sidesteps under the glider, and then as it comes up, he's gonna go boom, face the glider and goes to a lean because you have to lean once the glider's above you. Turns then leans, turns then leans, bingo. And loading the glider. You can see him lean back and his butt is hanging out over the air being held by the glider, not standing lock-legged because you gotta lean back, the glider's gotta be loaded. Drop the glider to the right again. Bingo, and... Fix the brake, don't lose, yep. Okay, notice he's leaning back. You gotta load the glider. If you're standing lock-legged, it's gonna start dragging you at this point and put you on your face. So all you gotta do is lean back and it's like a tug of war. You gotta have a constant tug of war. You're leaning against it, it's pulling you, it should be equal. You lean back, the same amount it's pulling you. But if he buries both brakes, that's when it creates drag. If he puts the glider sideways to the right, yeah, drops the glider to the right. Oh, oh, good time to do it. Go for it, drop it to the right. And then stuff brakes. And then he pulls brakes. Now it's yanking him. Brakes create drag. So if you pull brakes, now you're getting drug as opposed to making corrections. So if you don't want to get drug, <laughs> there you go. Yeah, and that's exactly what you guys do. I did this yesterday. Yeah. And then you start running and then you pull brakes harder instead of letting off. If you're getting drug, ease off the brakes. That doesn't mean snap them out all at once because then it does that right there, boom. And then you slam them and stall it and yank it and, and then you start a big old oscillation. Smooth responses, no panic. You see he got hit with a gust. Notice he didn't go to his tippy toes. He picked his knees up and flew. So he dropped all of his weight on the glider as opposed to going up with it. If you get hit with a gust and it lifts you, pick your knees up and fly. Put all your body weight on the glider and make sure you flail and start flapping like a turkey. There you go. That's, uh, that's exactly what you guys look like. Stop doing that. He doesn't know how to do it wrong. That's it. Smooth, smooth. Notice him running backwards. He's not carrying his body weight with his legs. The glider's carrying him. He's just like I was doing the other day. He's floating. He's barely touching the ground. He's flying backwards, not walking backwards and dragging a glider. So now, yeah. Gus comes, picks us up. We pull our knees up instead of going our tippy toes. Is there a guarantee we won't come back down? Yep. Because there's, <laughs> there's no lift. Uh, in straight air on the beach, the air is going that way. It's not producing lift. So it, it, the gust might surge and pick you up, but then there's no lift to sustain flight and you're going to float back down. Okay. So yes, you will glide back down. In order to stay up, you would have to be over the front of that sand dune, which is why we don't want you anywhere near that sand dune. Because if a gust pulled you to the sand dune, the air is going up over that sand dune. And if that air is rising 
faster than the glider sink rate, you will sustain flight and you will go up instead of down. And then you can sustain flight. But on level ground, no, you cannot sustain flight. Unless you're in the desert and it's a thermal, which is possible but unlikely. So it is possible to launch a paraglider with no motor from flat ground, but extremely rare. You would have to run, jump, and catch a thermal at exactly the precise moment in order to get lift to go up. It's, it's been done, but it's extremely rare. So yeah, even if a gust pulled you 150 feet in the air, you're gonna glide right back down. Well, immediately, the only thing that's gonna lift you is the initial surge. Because what happens is the airspeed increases suddenly and you were standing on the ground and that increase is what brought you up. But it immediately goes backwards and regains its normal airspeed. As soon as the gust hits, it's gonna immediately start drifting with the wind, in which case it's gonna sink back through the air because, you know, unless the wind kept accelerating, you know, went 40 miles an hour, 80, 120, 240, and kept going up, that would keep climbing uh, because it would keep pushing you and increasing airspeed. But if you get hit with a 40 mile an hour gust, you'll get an initial lift until about two seconds, the glider will drift with the wind regain its normal airspeed and you'll sink right back down. So only the sudden burst of airspeed is gonna give you lift to jerk you off the ground. Just like you saw happen several times here, he got popped off the ground, he immediately drifted back down. Just depends on the size of the gust. The bigger gust, I mean, I've seen people go over, you know, 150 feet in the air from a huge gigantic gust, but then immediately glide right back down. No problem. As long as you don't lose control. Right. Can you reverse when you're up in the air? Um, you can. The uh, depends on how high you go. Well, I'm just the, saying you're 150 feet in the air. And you're, yeah, if, if you go 150 feet in the air, you might actually let go, turn around, grab the brakes, and fly back down forwards. Okay. But it depends on the conditions. If it's really trashy, you might not want to let go of the brakes and just fly down backwards. Just like he did. He got popped off. He just stayed reverse. So you can just fly backwards. It, it kind of depends on the situation. I mean, if you got popped up and you're gliding back down a long ways and you got to pinpoint a landing and see where you're going, you might want to flip around.